artificial intelligence, machine learning, quantum machine learning, are all technologies we've developed as humans to try and make our lives easier and to solve some really hard problems. And as such, the rate of development of these exponential technologies has been, well, exponential. But something really interesting to note is if you think about the rate of which human intelligence has been increasing. And that has just remained stagnant. And that's a really interesting thing to think about. Because some of the smartest people in the world think that the only way we'll be able to solve really tough problems in our future and ensure the best success for the human race is only if we increase human intelligence. Which is why I'm so excited to share my topic with you today, brain-machine interfaces. Connecting your brain with pieces of technology. Machines, computers, other brains, and even things we can't even conceive of, like the internet. So let's just think about where the technology is at today. Something you've probably all heard of, maybe even seen, prosthetic limbs. A way for you to control with your brain an external piece of technology. But there's a ton of other cool stuff happening. Facebook is trying to let you type with your brain. Uh, people are using brain-computer interfaces to cure diseases. And there's a whole bunch of things going on. So I'm quickly just going to explain how most of these technologies work and then go on to a little bit more stuff. So currently what happens is you have to get inputs from your brain. And there's lots of different pieces of hardware that do this and a lot of different uh, types of readings that you can get. EEGs are the most common, but there are a whole bunch of other ones that have their pros and cons. And you can use semi-invasive, invasive, or non-invasive methods to get these signals. And once you have them, you run them through a piece of software, and you get something that looks like this, your brain signals. Hertz frequencies that allow you to, that tend to show up when you do different activities. When you're focusing, you might have more alpha and beta waves, 7 to 12 hertz. If you have, like, sleeping, you'll get a different type of uh, wave. So then that gets sent through software, not the most beautiful type of software, because it's a pretty, like, new field. But you are eventually able to activate an output, which is super interesting. And they, sometimes, if it's complicated, you can add like machine learning layers to try and figure out what output you want to activate specifically. But there are three companies that are completely revolutionizing the way that this is trying to be done. So Neuralink by Elon Musk, Facebook, keeping a lot of stuff on the down low, but they're doing cool things, and uh, Kernel. So Kernel CEO Brian Johnson sold Braintree to eBay for $800 million, and then now he's working on Kernel. So pretty much these three companies are in a race to develop the first neural interface to allow humans to communicate in completely different ways because all three of these companies think that in the next 40 years, it'll totally be normal for everyone to have a brain chip in their brain, which is kind of interesting. So, I spent a lot of nights reading research papers and learning more, and I was like, great, now I want to do something. So the first project I built was turning music on and off with my brain. Um, I'm going to show you a video of that. Pretty much how it works is I stuck different electrodes on my face, and when I focused, it played a noise. Oh, is there no Two, audio? One. And the reason I use drum noises is because I didn't want to get copyright infringement for my video, but you can change it to any MP3 file. And now I've stopped focusing, and as you can see, now that I'm not focused, the drum sounds have stopped. And that's because I'm not focusing, and I can just do it one more time. So basically, that was the first project I built, and I was super happy because my hard work paid off into something kind of cool. And more recently, I was struggling with this for about like a long time, and I managed to control a remote control car with my brain. And so it kind of works in the same mechanism as the last one. So pretty much, if you're focused, music turned on and off. This one, if you're focused, the car goes forward and stops if you're not focused. And then I use jaw clenching, because jaw clenching causes a lot of noise in your EEG signals. And I actually used it in order to turn the car. So when I clenched my jaw, it would pick up as an EEG signal, because it causes noise. And then it would turn the car. So I'll show you a quick snippet.
Thank you. So I, was, I struggled with that for a long time, so I was super happy when I finally figured it out. Um, and I think the tech's really amazing. So yeah, I just stuck different electrodes on my face, processed through my computer, sent to an Arduino via uh, Bluetooth, and the Arduino communicated with the remote control car. So, oh, okay. Then I was like, okay, this is awesome. Brain-computer interfaces are sick. Uh, and I looked at the intersections between brain-computer interfaces and other exponential technologies. Because I thought to myself, okay, so in 40 years, let's say we all have brain chips that are helping us be smarter, more intelligent humans. Uh, that could be a big problem. <laughs> Facebook, like people are worried about Facebook knowing where you click and what public photos you post, but this type of technology has the ability to know everything that you're thinking at all times. Humans are just data. We get paid for our jobs, for providing outputs, which is just like our data. We get paid $50,000 a year, for example, for providing our information. And someone knowing all the data about what makes you you can be pretty terrifying. So I got really interested in blockchain, um, and I decided that blockchain was a cool linker that could be used in this field. And recently, I attended the Crypto Chicks Hackathon, which was in this room, which is kind of funny. Um, and I competed there and I won the developer track for my project which allowed me to put data uh, on the blockchain essentially. So you can't put like files on the blockchain so I used IPFS which is distributed file sharing system and the only way to access your file is if you get a hash. So the hash got sent to an Ethereum smart contract. So pretty much I put genetic data on the blockchain but this can totally be applied to other things like brain computer interfaces which would allow you to share your data securely, get paid for it if you wish to and be completely anonymous in the way your data is shared. So I think it's a pretty cool application that intersects directly with blockchain. Um, and I just wanted to thank in like the, my journey, I've had a lot of cool companies and people uh, support me, and they've totally made my experience and all this completely awesome. And so my next steps would be virtual reality games, or I was thinking about it, I was like, if virtual reality is gonna be a huge part of our future, there's no way we're gonna be in a virtual world playing with a remote control like Xbox controller. Like, I can barely play Fortnite because it's too many buttons for me to understand. And I was like, okay, so if we're gonna live in a virtual place, we're gonna need some sort of way to control this. So I guess my next step controlling a VR game would be interesting. And then I had a call with the CEO of Kernel, which was one of the brain-computer interface companies I talked about. And so I'm in talks to go work with them in this, the summer in LA. So I'm super pumped about that because I'll actually get hands-on experience developing and working with some of the smartest people in the world in the brain-computer interface space. Uh, so I just think brain-computer interfaces is a super duper cool technology that will completely change the way in which we live. And it's not extremely known about, yet the applications and possibilities for the future are totally like mind-blowing. So hopefully you learned something from this presentation and thank you so much for watching.